Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and in this video, as you can see from the title, we're gonna be focusing on the Hamlet phase. If you haven't checked out my setup video, dungeon exploration video, or the battles video, all of those are in a playlist. A link to that will show up in the top right hand corner so you can check all those videos out to understand how we got to where we are right now. So without further ado, let's dive into the initial steps about returning to the Hamlet, and then we're gonna talk about what we can do once we're there. Now, whether you were successful or not in your dive into the dungeon after questing is over, the heroes will all return to the hamlet. They're going to try and lick their wounds before they face horrors again. And when you return to the hamlet, there's a number of things you need to do. The first one is to shuffle back all discarded trinkets, curio cards, quirks, diseases, room cards, and loot boxes. The second thing to do is all conditions are removed and light on the track goes back up to five. Then all trinkets are turned to their good side. Also, afflictions and virtues are removed and are replaced by negative and positive quirks, respectively. No life or stress is recovered. That's something that's very important to mention. And no quirks or diseases are removed. Heroes need to heal themselves by visiting locations of the Hamlet. So to find out where we can do things like that, let's check out the Hamlet phase board. The Hamlet is your hub. You're going to be able to rest here, shop, train, and help the air restore it slowly back to its former glory. Heroes here can return after each dungeon dive, but they must make the following steps once they arrive. The first thing you do is to draw a town event and mark your preparation days. I've gone ahead and drawn a town event. We're going to flip this over in a second. I'll also be using the same marker in this prototype that I used for the round tracker for combat, this one right here, in order to mark how many days we have in town. It appears the town has some traveling merchants. It says each hero can choose one of their provision die to be whatever they want for the next run. So normally you're rolling two for each of the characters. One of them can be picked for each character. That's actually pretty awesome as you can mitigate some of the dice rolling going on. Every town event card also indicates how many days you have to prepare for your next quest. You'll see that number at the bottom of the card. In this case, it's two. I'll be using this prototype tracker to place it on two for that track. One thing to make note of though, in the final version, you'll actually have a party miniature or token representing that tracker that you can use. The next thing we need to do is roll for the caretaker. This is a suspicious person who took care of the Hamlet before the heir arrived and continue to do so at his temporary absence. So right now, at the beginning of each day, we're gonna roll a D10 and we're gonna place him in the particular spot of the appropriate location on the Hamlet board. He occupies that space and blocks heroes from visiting it. If you need to roll for something else that blocks location as well, like the boss's threat ability, and you roll the same location as a caretaker, roll it again until you roll a free spot. So if you look closely at the board, you will see some numbers underneath each one of these locations. We got 1 to 2, 3, 4, 9 to 10, 8, 7, all the way around different locations with different number values on them. I'm gonna go ahead right now and roll a die. We'll see where the caretaker goes. It ends up being a 10, so that's gonna be the Nomad Wagon, which will be blocked for now. It's also important to note that potentially your imminent threat could actually have a town ability that prevents you from going to a particular location. In the case of the Necromancer, that's exactly it. If you actually take this particular card he has for the character and flip it over to the opposite side or upside down, you'll see a town ability says the graveyard is also blocked. I've gone ahead and placed the Necromancer in the top right hand corner of the board where the graveyard is to denote that we cannot use that location either. And you'll also notice there's another miniature on the board in the stagecoach position right here. There actually used to be two, but one of those is actually now part of our party and that's the Vestal. And that's because the Vestal replaced the Grave Robber when it took an unfortunate turn in a battle. So as we've already placed on the tracker, we have two days here in town. So we want to spend these wisely in a this point in time by our stance order going from aggressive all the way through to support so starting on the right hand side of the board with the gesture moving all the way through to the vestal heroes are going to visit various locations of town spending money and time to heal their physical and mental trauma train their skills cure their diseases and all kinds of other things each hero occupies a space in the location he visits and if there is not free space in a location the hero cannot visit it 
heroes can only take one of the available choices each day they visit a location. So you might go to a location, there might be multiple things here you can do, you can only pick one of them. After all your days have been spent, then you're going to go ahead as usual and draw two quest cards, just like we did in setup, and decide which one we want to follow. However, if it is boss time, it's like near the end of your campaign, you don't draw any quests and just follow the boss quest card. Now it's worth noting right before I go ahead with the Jester and choose where I'd like to place that individual, you can, if you want, while you're in town at any time during your stay, you can spend money to upgrade any locations of your choosing. Using the cost to upgrade a location from level 1 to level 2 is 20, while upgrading from level 2 to 3 costs 40. Now just before I go ahead and show you what an entire town leveled up to level 2 would be and look like, first of all be aware based on my prior statement that it's 20 gold for each location. So that would be extremely costly. I'm going into this right now with 20 gold. So again remember I jumped out of the dungeon early. I could have kept going. I would have probably had a lot more gold to come out with. But regardless upgrading an actual building is something you're going to have to be very very picky about in terms of what you actually are going after because it will increase the ability to do certain things at that location as you start to upgrade those buildings and it's going to cost you as I mentioned so for instance on this side of the board we have things like the survivalist tavern sanatorium and the stagecoach so you can see here the survivalist says gain one provisions die next run this is one gold Tavern one here has the ability to drop your stress for one gold and it's actually three stress it drops you can also drop your stress by six for three gold. Sanatorium here can heal three for one gold, heal 10 for three gold, or remove disease for two gold. And of course, we've already talked about the stagecoach. It's going to house all the other characters you have to bring into your party when you have a character die. Here's a look at the right side of town. We have the Abbey, so remove one quirk for two gold, remove two quirks for five gold. The Graveyard says gain a virtue for the next run, although we can't do that, Necromancer is blocking it. Guild, upgrade a level one hero card for four gold, three XP or upgrade a level one skill card for two gold and two XP. And then down there in the bottom right hand corner, we have the Blacksmith. It says gain a one off dodge or damage boost for two gold. And the one that the caretaker is blocking is the Nomad Wagon level one. Three common trinkets are available when you're in town, but not when the caretaker is blocking them. Now, while I was showing you all those different locations and what you can do in them, you probably noticed that two of them don't have a level beside them. The graveyard and the guild, both of them don't have a one beside them, meaning they can't be upgraded. The only ones that can are the other seven. As you can see on the board right now, six of them are visible. The seventh one, of course, is being blocked right here, but those are the seven that are visible. So if you wanted to upgrade all of those level ones up to level two at a cost of 20 per location, it would cost you 140 gold to pull that off, but I'm still gonna show you what that looks like. And just like that, we have everything upgraded to level two. You'll also notice that visually things start looking a lot better inside the town in terms of the artwork as well. But not only that, the number of options that become available to you increase. On the left hand side of town, Survivalist 2 says gain a provisions die next run for one gold or gain two dice for next run for three gold. The tavern number two allows you to remove three stress, six stress, or ten stress at one, three, and seven gold respectively. The sanatorium allows you to heal seven, fourteen, or remove diseases for one, three, and two respectively. The Abbey, which is on the right-hand side of the board, allows you to remove a single quirk, two quirks, or gain a positive quirk for two, five, and three, respectively. The Blacksmith allows you to gain a one-off dodge and a damage boost for two gold. And the Nomad Wagon allows for two common and one common trinkets to be part of the available options to get. The Stagecoach on the far left, you'll also notice, says place three unused heroes. And all of these locations can be upgraded to level three to gain even more. So now that you understand the options available, let's go ahead and reset back to the way it was for my playthrough. And we're 
going to run through the two days as an example of how this Hamlet phase will work. So the Jester is going to go first, and as you can see from how much I pulled out of the dungeon run I did when I definitely bailed early in my example, I don't have a ton of XP. Now, normally if I had gone through the dungeon, I might have had a couple more, and I'd be able to do something like head to the guild and be able to upgrade a level one hero card or upgrade a level one skill card. But I'm going to have to wait for another day for that. Instead, I'm going to have the Jester go to the Survivalist and for one gold be able to gain an additional provision die next run. Now this is something that's very important and you'll definitely want to use this when you're playing through a campaign of Darkest Dungeon, the board game. But for me in this video, seeing as this is more of an overview of the Hamlet phase, I wanted to mention that there are specific town powers, just like I talked about in my setup video, for every single character in the game. However, the only twist here is during this particular video, you won't see me using any of the town powers, but you'll definitely want to use these and take advantage of them when you're going through the Hamlet phase. So for the four characters, as an example, let's talk about the different powers they have. The Vestal's Town Power says that the Vestal can pray for themselves to recover all stress, debuff for six turns, or chant for all their allies, lose a stress, get a buff for three turns. The Highwayman has clean guns. Start the next dungeon with a buff for six turns. The Arbalist Town Power is Field Dressing. Choose yourself or an ally and roll a d10. If you get a 1 to a 3, you can heal 6. 4 to a 8, heal 3. And 9 to a 10, you increase your stress by 2. Finally, the Jester has a Town Power that states every rose has its thorn. One ally can reduce one stress per negative quirk and disease. The Jester has completed the task for the day, got an extra provision die that will definitely come in handy. Next up is going to be the Highwayman, who's going to head to the Tavern and is going to spend a single gold to reduce stress by three. The Highwayman now has no stress whatsoever. I've adjusted the tracker on the character board. Next, we'll move to the Arbalist. It's also important to note that a hero takes up the entirety of a space at a particular location by occupying it, and you can't have another hero head to that same location if there's already a hero there but remember you're there for a number of days so there will be a chance to go back and of course if you're playing solo or even with other individuals you can talk amongst yourselves as to which location you're going to go to or not go to the Arbalist headed to the Blacksmith in order to gain a damage boost for two gold. So I'll place that on the character mat, and you'll also notice our gold is down to 16. The last individual left is the Vestal, and the great news is because she came in near the tail end of the battle video, she has no issues with stress currently, she has nothing she needs on the health side of things, and in terms of what's on the board right now, we are A-OK -okay with finishing off the day. We're now moving on to the last day in the town. So the two steps we go through are rolling for the caretaker and then spending our days in town. Let's see what the caretaker will be blocking today. Four, that is gonna be the sanatorium, which is actually pretty good because we have nobody that needs to heal. So it's actually nice. And you can see here now we have the ability to actually deal with trinkets. The Jester really likes the idea of going up to the Survivalist and purchasing for one gold the ability to roll an additional provision die on the next run. The Highwayman has a default value of one dodge and really likes the idea of heading to the Blacksmith to pay two gold, as I already have, to gain a one-off dodge. The Arbalist is most interested in checking out the Nomad Wagon because the Arbalist doesn't have any trinkets, whereas the Highwayman already has a trinket, and so does the Jester, which is why they didn't go to that Nomad Wagon right away. So for the Arbalist, and again, it's also worth noting that the Jester or the Highwayman could have gone to the Nomad Wagon if they wanted to, and they could get rid of one of the trinkets that they already have, but being at level one, they can only have one trinket. Herbalist has nothing, so she wants to grab something. So in this particular case, if I want to purchase something, I've got three options here. I've got the Sage's Book, Speedstone, and Caution Cloak. This one right here gives me a plus two accuracy when I'm in the support position. This one gives me an increase to my movement, or it will help me out by increasing my dodge by one, or the Caution Cloak says, Scout without suffering any stress. 
There is also negatives on the opposite side of the trinket here. You can see upside down minus one accuracy for this Sage's book. This one is a minus one to movement or a minus one to dodge on the opposite side. And this one over here is a minus one to the light level. The Arbalist is going to go with Caution Cloak, and it cost 8 gold. We're left with 5 remaining. Last to go is the Vestal, and again, because the Vestal came into play at the very tail end of the dungeon right before we left, even though in a regular game I would have kept on exploring, gaining more gold and more XP, giving us more options as would be the normal way to play Darkest Dungeon. But in this preview series, the Vestal coming in at the tail end has nothing that they need to do, as stress and health are already good to go. And just like that, our time in the Hamlet phase has come to an end, and this is where we would circle back around and head back towards a general quest. We would draw two quest cards and make a decision. This would get us circling right back to my setup video as we continue our campaign through four different dungeons going towards the final boss. So hopefully this helps you make an informed decision on the Kickstarter. This is an in-depth look at three major phases of the game. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always keep on rolling solo